All right, this is the first video in unit eight, uh, which focuses on conic sections. And in this unit, we talk about circles, parabolas, uh, ellipses, and hyperbolas. And so we're, this first video is gonna focus on circles and it's not gonna be, and this is gonna be the shortest of the videos. Um, and circles are the set of points in a plane equidistant from a fixed point. And that fixed point is the center, and that um, and that the distance is the radius. So, and if you remember, when we came up with the equation for the circle, that is the completed square form of the circle, we had a random point x y on the circle, and we had this center h k. And we use the dist and we knew the, the distance um, from the center to any point on the circle is the radius, and we said that was R. And we used the distance formula to come up with uh, the completed square form of the circle. And so remember, the distance formula is just the square root of the difference of the x's squared. And this is derived from, if you go back to geometry class, it was derived from the Pythagorean theorem. So the difference from the x's squared plus the differences of the y's squared. And then if we square both sides, we get x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So in this form, notice that the coefficients in front of both the squared terms here, one, and then the, and so then the right side would be, um, when it's in this form, the right side indicates the radius squared. So in order for something to be a circle, if we were thinking about to foil this all out, so say, and we talk about a general form, so say we were to foil this out and we'd, not this specifically, but if I were to have a foiled out version where A, B, C, D, and F were just constants or coefficients. The only way this, when, after I complete the square, the only way this is even possibly a circle is if A equals B. If A doesn't equal B, then there's no way this is gonna be a circle. Even if A equals B, there's different situations that could happen. Once, so that's why it's really important to complete the square anyway. So if I complete the square, and again, completing the square, I get something that I'm gonna write in this form, where it's if it's in this form, the center's hk, and the radius is the square root of the right side. So I'll just give you an example. Say it was, say I complete the square and I get x plus three squared plus y minus two squared equals eight. Well, the center in, is then negative three, two, and the radius is the square root of the right side, so two root two. Now, when you complete the square, as I said before, even if the coefficient of x squared and the coefficient of y squared are the same, you could end up, after you complete the square, with the right side being zero. So say you, again, say we get down to this form, if we end up with r squared being positive, we've got a circle. If r squared is zero, we have a point because the distance from the point, to, uh, from the center to any point on the circle is zero, so it's going nowhere. So we just have the point hk. And if r squared is negative, we have no graph. So let's go through a problem, because um, as you know, now that we've done um, some conic sections here, you it's not um, being able to recognize what to anticipate can be helpful. So let's give you an example. I want to do one where, okay, yeah, let's do something like this. All right, so um, first say I ask, identify the conic, so you want to tell me if it's a circle, point, or no graph in this case. Um, I guess it could be other things too, but given we're just talking about circles right now, we're going to, I'm just going to say identify the conic. Uh, if it is a circle, give the center and radius. Okay, so... 
say we had some, and this will allow us to talk about completing the square. Okay, so one thing that clues me in the fact that this is possibly a circle is again, the coefficients of the squared terms are the same. Not only are they the same absolute value, they're the same sign too, it's both a positive four. All right, so let's, uh, to complete the square, we're gonna get everything with X's together and everything with Y's together. And let's bring the constant to the other side. You cannot complete the square until you the coefficient of the squared term is one. So I'm gonna factor out the four and then I'm gonna factor out the four with the Y's as well. And remember to complete the square, you take half of the linear coefficient. So in this case, half of one is a half and I'm gonna square it, so adding a fourth. But how have I really changed that side? I've really changed that side by four times a fourth or by one. Same here, half of negative, half of negative one is uh, negative a half, squared is a fourth. Again, I've really changed the side by adding one. All right, and now let's write the perfect square. It was x plus a half squared plus four y minus a half squared equals nine. So the mistake sometimes that gets made here is people like, boom, done, got my circle. No, 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 you gotta have the, these, we gotta get rid of these coefficients here. And this is where if they weren't the same, we could not get it into the completed square form of the circle. So they've gotta be the same. So I can divide both sides by four. So I've got x plus a half squared plus y minus a half squared equals nine fourths. And now in this form, the right side is positive. So I did have a circle. The center is negative one half, one half. And the radius is the square root of the right side, three halves. Okay, so that is circles. And what other problems could we have with related to circles? Well, I could give you some information. You have to find the equation of the circle. For example, if I gave you a center, the center and a point on the circle, you could plug in that point, you could plug in um, for x and y, the, that point in for x and y, and then solve for r squared. Um, there was a case where I found the, um, the I gave you the two endpoints of a diameter, so that allowed you to find the center because that would be the midpoint of the diameter. And then um, you could also use the distance formula to find the radius, which is half the diameter, or the distance from the center to one of the endpoints. So if you want some more practice there, you can look to um, 8.1. But that's it with circles. Okay, so next up we're gonna talk parabolas, which gets a little bit more complicated. We've worked with parabolas before, but not in the geometric, using the geometric definition. So that will be a little different.